Hi guys, it's Katie from Pumpkin Latte Lover. I'm back with another tag video for you today. And this was created by Josh at Literary Gladiators, and it is called the Cannoli Tag. Um, my favorite country in the whole world is Italy, and cannolis are one of my favorite things to get there. And so I just, when I saw this tag, I really wanted to do it. Um, and unfortunately, it's taken me a while to get around to you actually sitting down and getting everything together, but um, I'm finally there and I'm excited to get started with the questions. So the first question was, um, shall, what author and or publisher always comes out with the best book covers? Now, I don't have any of these books, but I uh, really enjoy looking at them and one day hopefully we'll pick some up soon. But um, the book covers that I most enjoy aren't just from one publisher or one author. Um, I'm going to cheat a little here and change my answer to just a whole entire country. I really like the UK version of a lot of covers. Now, I don't think every book has a different cover for different countries, but often there'll be a North American version and there'll be a UK edition. And the UK editions, I find, to almost always be a lot more interesting looking, um, a lot more beautiful. I just, I really like them and enjoy looking at them. Um, Cream is the second question, and that is an author or writer that is good at anything that they write. Sorry, I keep looking down, but my questions are on my computer down there, and um, it's hard to read. But anyways, the answer Sorry, so the the answer to question number two that I picked was Agatha Christie. So here I have The Body in the Library, which is um, one of my favorite books by her. And I tend to buy a lot of her books used. You can find them everywhere and anywhere. And you really can't go wrong picking up any one that you get. But the reason that I said that she's good at writing everything is that she also wrote a lot of plays. So she's known for writing a lot of books. She's also known for writing a lot of plays. And I also have um, The Mousetrap and other plays here. And The Mousetrap was her runnest, her runnest, her longest running play. Um, and it's also excellent to read as well. I love how, um, like, it's, it's, her book seems so simple. And at the same time, I have a really hard time figuring out the answer to who did it. So it's always a good one to get sucked into. And um, I can't say that I've read a lot of plays in my time. I just find the flow hard to get into. Uh, but she's a genius in getting me into them regardless. So that's why I picked her. Question number three, chocolate chips, a trope that you think continues to work. Um, the one that I was going to say is the trope of... Um, the young, strong female protagonist overcoming some sort of um, major challenge in, in a dystopian world, most likely. Um, I'm thinking Hunger Games, Divergent, and those, um, those series were really popular, and it was quite popular to say um, the, the publisher's quote to be, you know, the next Hunger Games or the next Divergent, and um, it was quite a thing to market your book that way. And I think that's great. I think it's about time that we've seen more female protagonists come to the forefront, a, a main character that young girls can really look to. And I'm sorry the camera is shaking because my cat is climbing along the bottom here. Um, but that, I think that's really great. What I would like to do away with is the trope that she needs to have a love interest that um, where that the love story kind of starts taking over the rest of the plot of the book. I would like it to focus a little bit more on just the female character getting it done, but what can you do? Everybody loves a love story, so there you go. Um, number four, chocolate covering, a cover that you thought was much better than the actual story. So for that, I picked Love in the Time of Cholera. Um, I was really excited to read this book. I just found that the cover uh, was really interesting. I thought that the colors were beautiful. I thought it really set the tone for where the book was set. 
Um, there's a little eye down here, which is intriguing. Um, and just like the mix of everything on here, I just thought was well balanced and looked really beautiful. But for some reason, um, reading the book, I just really couldn't get that into it. Um, I think maybe I might have to give it another go now that it's been years later. Maybe it was just the mood I was in. But I was really disappointed that I didn't love it. Number five, powdered sugar. Where do you look first in the bookstore? Uh, so it depends on which bookstore I am in, but if I am going to Chapters, the big, you know, box bookstore, usually in the front door right when you walk in they have like Heather's Picks and um, tables set up there that are just um, a lot of popular books grouped together. So I usually browse there first just to see if there's anything I'm interested in and then go from there. They're also really good at putting together different um, categories of tables of books so then that always brings you together with one sort of category whether that be, you know, Game of Thrones is really popular right now because the season's starting so we're going to put a bunch of books together that would be like that one if you like that. Um, you know, th things like that. When people are graduating from school, they put a lot of things together that are about, you know, embarking on your adulthood and your careers. And so I find that always interesting to see what they pair together. But at my independent bookstore, it's not very big. Uh, so there's not a lot of, I mean, I can cover the whole store easily. Uh, but they also do a similar thing where they write down the staff picks. So I tend to get drawn to those little note cards that they have stuck around the store, uh, recommending books that they've read. And there's um, they uh, they put their names next to their recommendations, and so you can kind of get to know which uh, staff member likes which type of book. And then if your tastes are similar, you kind of start to look for their little note cards because they might have read something that you haven't heard of yet. Number six is dried fruit, where you enjoyed the book, but then you questioned the adaptation to the movie. And I had to go with um, Sarah's Key. So Sarah's Key is by um, Tatiana De Rosny, and I, which I probably said wrong. I'm always really bad with names. I apologize. Uh, but when I got this book, I hadn't heard a whole lot about it. It was quite early on, so I hadn't heard a lot of hype. And I um, really enjoy historical fiction or things that bring to light um, th common things in history that we maybe need to take a closer look at. And so this book was about um, France in World War II and the role that they had in rounding up the Jews. And um, it brought to light uh, just a, a unique look at maybe how the how the French played a role in this that I hadn't really known about before. And they do it in um, a really great way where it's an American wife who um, is now an expat. She's married to a Frenchman. Her kids live in France. And she's, um, she's a reporter or a writer. And she's assigned a story. And then she um, starts delving deeper into this history and uh, comes across the story of a young girl and her brother. And the story just kind of unfolds from there, and I really enjoyed how they really showed the main character and um, how deep her character was, and then also really delved into the other characters from the history that she's delving into. I really liked it. When the movie came out, it wasn't widely released in Canada. I couldn't find a place to watch it anywhere when it was released in the US. Um, and then much later we discovered that it was playing in our local cinema, not the big you know, cineplex, but we have a local cinema that's above a local bookstore. And they were playing Sarah's Key. They tend to play a lot of foreign films, independent films, and um, so that's where we found it. We were really excited. We went to see it. And I was just highly disappointed. I just found that they didn't um, they didn't do a very good job of showing how impactful and serious her discoveries were uh, surrounding that time. I found it very anticlimactic, whereas the book was very uh, intense. I was on the edge of my seat seeing what would happen. Uh, the main character also didn't get developed into a very complex character in the movie, so overall I was quite disappointed with how it turned out.
Okay, so number seven is pistachios. And that is a work or author that you enjoy but you feel is an acquired taste. So for me, I think that that would have to be Jane Austen. Um, I, many people love Jane Austen, but I find that with most average readers who aren't as intensely into reading, um, that are friends of mine are really not as into classics as I am. It's harder to find somebody to have a conversation uh, surrounding classics. And Jane Austen, I think, is wonderful. Um, I don't think that anybody can disagree that she's had, uh, you know, she's one of the most widely known classic authors of our time. And this is the complete novels. I got this years ago in high school as a gift. And it's got the gold leaf in here, and I just really like it as a coffee table book, although it is starting to get battered here through my many moves uh, through college and afterwards. But it's um, something that I fell in love with really early. I really loved Jane Austen. I've seen her house in England in Bath, and I um, have always been a fan, but I do think that you know your average reader who likes thrillers or romance or, you know, just the the popular fiction um, might not be as interested in diving into this book. I think it's something that you kind of have to work your way towards if you aren't automatically a classic um, lover. So that's what I've chose there. Number eight is Minnie, a short story writer or poet that you would like to recommend. Now guys, I have to admit that I need to work on this area of my reading, so if you have any suggestions, please bring them on. Uh, I just had a discussion about this on BookTube this week because I was saying that I really haven't gotten into short stories that much, and I really have a hard time getting into poetry. So uh, the one that I did pick was L.M. L. M. Montgomery. Now you guys will probably know her most as the author of Anne of Avonlea and of Green Gables. I grew up loving these books. But she did write um, a few adult novels, but more importantly to this question, uh, she did write some adult short stories as well. So she wrote um, uh, Chronicles of Avonlea, Further Chronicles of Avonlea, I think a couple more books, but those are the two that I have. Unfortunately, I can't find them, even though I do own them, but I do remember really loving uh, reading through all those short stories. There was a lot of really funny antidotes, and um, I really enjoyed them, but other than that, I really do need your suggestions, guys. I am really horribly behind on um, being up on all my short story authors and Poetry, really. I really need to get into some poetry because I have a hard time getting into that. Number nine is Lemon Zest, and that is an author that you feel has the greatest way with words. And for that, um, I picked an author that I, I would like to read more of, but I uh, have enjoyed what I've read so far, and that would be Margaret Atwood. Uh, she's a Canadian author, and... Uh, arguably one of our most famous Canadian authors. And I have read The Handmaid's Tale by her, I read The Blind Assassin, enjoyed it both. I just found something about her writing was um, just beautiful. It was beautifully written, the story was so well told, and um, I just think, you know, the caliber of writing is, is huge. So this book is um, Alias Grace. I have not read it yet, but it is on my list and I just can't read, wait to read more. I feel like no matter what she does, um, you know, she's successful. She's, every book she comes out with is usually well acclaimed and everything I've read so far is beautiful as well. So looking forward to reading more of that. And number 10 is Cinnamon, a tip you have to be a better reader. Uh, I would say if you're reading, you are doing something right. I think that, um, you know, there's a lot of people who look down on other people and judge what they're reading um, if it's not, you know, if it's not up to standard to classic literature or um, highly acclaimed authors. If it's like a harlequin romance, people are obviously judging you on what you're reading. And I think, you know, I really hate harlequin romance, but I think that if somebody's reading a book, they should be applauded for reading no matter what it is. And then I think if you've only read, you know, the harlequin romance paperbacks or um, 
if you haven't really delved further outside of your comfort zone to become a better reader, you definitely should do that. I think that I'm always challenging myself to read outside of my comfort zone. Of course, the majority of the books that I read are things that I lean towards naturally. Um, but every once in a while, you know, there is a book out there where I think, this is, it doesn't sound like something I normally enjoy, this is something that is completely different for me, but I'm going to try it out anyways because you never know. It can expand your horizons, it can teach you new things, it can teach you new things about yourself, and the worst thing that happens is you don't like it and that's that, you move on. So I think anybody can benefit from really trying to expand their horizons and step outside their comfort zone. And I think maybe just start small. If you like the Harlequin romance, move into, you know, something along those lines where it's just, um, maybe you'd enjoy a chick lit book where it has a lot of romance in it, but it's just a little bit, um, you know, a step a little bit different in one direction or if you are somebody who only reads YA, maybe read, um, you know, we never had this category, new adult, when I was growing up. I feel old. This is something that's not normally in my uh, book vocabulary, but you know what I mean. Something that's just a little bit older, a little bit of a step up, but still along those lines. And I think that Goodreads is a really good tool for you to look at to see what kind of books might be close to the genre that you're used to reading and maybe can help you step outside your comfort zone a little bit. And maybe you discover new things you love. Maybe you discover, nah, you just like what you like and you stick with that. Number 11 is The Godfather, a book with multiple deaths. And I really wanted to go with Game of Thrones, but I felt like that was really, really obvious. And I feel like that's kind of a cop-out answer for me. So I went with the Outlander series by Diana Gabaldon. Um, this one is Dragonfly and Amber. Unfortunately, I don't have the other books with me as I've been reading the series. I've just been borrowing from a good friend of mine or getting them from the library. So unfortunately, this is the only book that I have to show you in this series. I haven't completed it yet, but I am in love with the series. And right from the first book, um, you do have quite a bit of uh, danger and maybe some death thrown in there. Number 11 is Dessert Tray, Who Would You Tag? So I've written a few people down here and hopefully they want to do this tag as well. The first one is Megan from Megan Darling. Um, then the next one is Amber by Just Booking Around, whose um, booktube name I love, by the way. Uh, the third one is Mural, I think that's how you say it. I know I'm butchering the pronunciation, um, but she is from a Blackbird's Books, and I really enjoy her channel. Uh, the next one is Krista from Books and Jams. And the last but not least is Caroline at Caroline Reads, which I also love her name, um, her actual name. <laughs> and so hopefully you guys can check out their channels. I'll link them in the down bar. Hope that they decide that they would like to do this tag as well. Thanks for coming along for my uh, answers to these questions and hope to see you guys soon. Thanks. Bye.